The victims in most frauds are both psychologically and physically distant. Take insider trading, for instance. If you can actually identify a case in, of insider trading where you can identify the victim, it's, it's quite hard. In most instances, we actually say that the victim is the market. So it's not even a person, it's, a, it's an abstract entity. With corporate crimes, there's actually even another element that further distances the perpetrators from the victims, and that's, that's time. And a lot of instances, take a, a Ponzi scheme, for instance. So Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme, at the time he was engaging in his Ponzi scheme, what were investors doing? They were going head over heels to give him more money, give him more leadership positions. Same thing Enron. When Enron was engaging in their fraud, Andy Fastow won CFO of the Year Award. And so at the time the executives are actually engaging in the misconduct, they're not going to get a sense of they're doing something harm, harmful by the investors. In any case, they might actually be praised by those same individuals. It's only when that crime unwinds itself at some later point in the future, which in some instances could be years away, that that harm becomes evident. And so I think this raises a challenge, is that we generally believe that knowing an action wrong is wrong is sufficient to stop us from going forward. But even in a room of fraud examiners, I think we could probably find things that we all do wrong. Speeding is probably the easiest example. If we drive, uh, I'll say, we, we all speed a little bit. We go eight miles over the speed limit. What do we say? Well, we're just keeping up with traffic on the highway. The speed limit's a little bit low here. But we know cops don't give a ticket for going five or eight miles over the speed limit. It's not a big deal. We, we find ways to, to justify and rationalize deviating from a rule as not being all that consequential. But in practice, what happens is that we need to feel something is harmful. If we actually feel it's harmful, we never even consider that as an option. This is why if the prohibition against murder was dropped in our communities, most of us wouldn't be all that worried. Reasonably socialized people don't take out their grievances by going and stabbing one another. You don't need a prohibition, a law telling you to not go stab your neighbor. If you're a reasonably socialized person, you just don't do that, even without a prohibition. Now the challenge for much corporate conduct is it's not going to instigate that same negative gut feeling because the victims and the harm are more abstract. As a result, we're left talking about the rules, but we find clever ways to actually rationalize deviating from them.